In this video, we'll learn about the stomp modules and stomp boxes. Now, Amplitude 4 has two stomp modules. We have stomp A and stomp B. As you can see at the moment, I have stomp A loaded up with six different stomp boxes. If we look at stomp B, you can see that it's empty. I haven't loaded any stomp boxes. But loading and selecting stomp modules is really pretty easy. So let's go over to stomp B and add to what I've already got loaded. I can choose from any of these six slots in Stomp B. So I could just click the word empty in the selector and I get a pop-up menu of some choices. Now you'll have the amplitude selection and you can see that when you choose that menu, you get several sub-menus of choices. And you might also have some additional choices in these categories, depending on what you may have already unlocked in the custom shop. Now I've added some from the custom shop, but I haven't added them all. For example, I have not unlocked the Morley Contour Wah. You can see here there's a little lock here, which means I don't have that yet. But for the ones that I do have, I can simply go to a menu, go to a sub-menu if there is one, and choose something I'd like to try. Now, if I want to choose a different stomp box, I can simply click the menu and choose something different. Or if I like this fuzz category and I want to try some other things quickly while playing, I can easily do that. I can just use the up and down arrow just like we did with presets, and click through. It's just that easy. And the same applies for any of the 12 total Stompbox slots I have available. I could go to any other empty one, or I could go to another Stompbox slot that's already in use and choose something different. Now, depending on the signal path preset you're using, you can have as many as 12 Stompboxes all in a row. For example, I'm using signal path preset number one, which means as my guitar input comes into Amplitude 4, it goes into Stomp A and then passes through Stomp B onto my amp section. So I could have 12 different stomp boxes all in a row. On the other hand, if I'm using a dual signal path like preset number two, I could have six stomp boxes on each signal path. Now, just like a real guitar pedal board, you probably won't use all your pedals all together all the time. You'll turn pedals on and off as needed. And you can do the same thing in Amplitude 4. Each stomp box pedal has its own on off button. So you can have several stomp boxes loaded and ready to go and turn them on when you want. If you have a pedal board like the iRig Stomp, you'll have even more control and flexibility at the tap of a switch. So with the stomp boxes I've got loaded now, let's play around with turning them on and off. Pretty simple to just turn them off and play around with them. Now every stomp box has its own set of parameters. You can see those here. And with all the variety that we have to choose from, we can't go through every single one. So my advice for learning all of these is just load one up at a time and play around with it. Then start playing with the parameters. Changing these parameters is really easy. Just click and drag your mouse on a dial, on a slider, or even on a foot pedal. It's just that simple. So just as you would with a brand new guitar pedal, Play around with the different parameters on various stomp boxes in Amplitude 4 and see what you get out of it. Now, another big part of working with stomp boxes and pedals is that audio can sound different depending on the order in which it passes through various pedals or stomp boxes. If you've ever worked with a real pedal board, you'll know that to change the order means that you have to start unplugging patch cables and patch them in a different order. It can be kind of confusing. With Amplitude, Changing the order of these stomp boxes is really easy. Audio passes from left to right, and we can change the order just by clicking and dragging a module. Just move it around to change the order. It's really just that simple. And you will hear a distinct difference as you change the order of pedals, especially some things like distortion, modulation, and so on. <laughs> So the order really does matter, but it's really easy to play around with. Before we go, let's look at one new feature in Amplitude 4, and that's that we can actually use rack items in the stomp module. We can do that by going back to our selector menu and go down and choose racks. This is going to show us a listing of rack items. Those would be rack effects processors, which we're going to learn about soon. So I'll return to the stomp module, and I'd like to have the tube compressor rack item as a stomp box. Now, this rack item is loaded as a stomp box. If I want to edit parameters, I'll just click this little edit button, and the rack item will be temporarily superimposed over the stomp module. 
Now I can make changes as I like, and then just click outside of the rack module to hide it again. And when we learn about rack effects, you'll see that we can also load stomp boxes within rack effects now. And that's a really nice feature to have, add some flexibility. In our next video, we'll learn about the amp module. Thanks for watching.